At the heart of the global aerospace industry, an epic rivalry has been unfolding for decades. Boeing and Airbus, the two giants that absolutely control 99% of the global market for commercial aircraft, with capacity over 200 passengers, wage a silent war that moves more than $979 billion annually, according to updated IATA projections for 2025. The numbers reveal an increasingly fierce competition. In 2024 alone, Airbus delivered 766 aircraft compared to Boeing's 348 deliveries, demonstrating a clear advantage in market execution. Simultaneously, European and Asian airlines demonstrate a growing preference for European models, with Airbus maintaining a commanding lead in total backlog orders. But what few know is that this growing dominance is not due to the Rolls-Royce Trent XWB engines with 97,000 pounds of thrust, nor to the composite materials that represent 53% of the A350 structure, much less to the wings with Sharklet technology that reduce fuel consumption by 4%. The true secret behind Airbus's success lies in an apparently simple but revolutionary strategy, an architectural decision that completely transformed the competitive dynamic and that may determine the future of this rivalry. If you're also passionate about the world of aviation, consider subscribing to the channel and supporting our team. Between 2020 and 2024, even facing the challenges of a global pandemic that reduced air traffic by 66%, both manufacturers maintained substantial investments in research and development. Boeing invested $3.812 billion in 2024 alone toward the development of new propulsion systems and advanced materials, while Airbus invested $3.517 billion focusing on operational efficiency and automation technologies. Each company obsessively seeks supremacy through impressive innovations. Engines that consume 25% less fuel than the previous generation, fly-by wire systems with triple redundancy, ceramic materials with 40% superior resistance to traditional aeronautical aluminum, and autonomous navigation systems that process 2.8 terabytes of data per flight hour. The competition intensifies with each launch. When Boeing announced the 787 Dreamliner with 50% composite materials in the fuselage, Airbus responded with the A350 using 53% carbon fiber. When the American company adopted Leap 1B engines with a 68.4-inch fan, the European company implemented the Trent XWB with 118 inches in diameter, generating 15% more energy efficiency. But there is an aspect of this rivalry that completely transcends cutting-edge engineering, and this is exactly what is redefining the market. Imagine yourself in the position of fleet director of a major international airline. Your desk is full of technical proposals. Eight A320neo aircraft versus eight Boeing 737 MAX equipped with Leap 1B of 29,317 pounds. The total investment? Approximately $1.2 billion. A wrong decision could compromise the company's profitability for the next 25 years. Both aircraft present extraordinary technical specifications, both with almost the same range, passenger capacity, and fuel consumption. The performance differences are minimal, less than 2% in all parameters. However, there is a decisive factor that has systematically tilted decisions toward the European side. Do this mental experiment. Position yourself in the commander's seat of any Airbus. Observe meticulously the front panel with its six screens, the side stick positioned to your left, the standardized buttons distributed across 14 functional panels, and the overhead panel. Now, the challenge. Can you identify if you're in an A320 or an A330 or even in the majestic A380? The answer is probably no, and this represents the core of the most brilliant strategy in modern commercial aviation. What you experienced is called cockpit commonality, the absolute standardization of interfaces, procedures, and operational philosophies between different models of the same manufacturer. While Boeing developed distinct cockpits for each aircraft family over decades, Airbus adopted a radically different approach since 1988, creating a uniform operational ecosystem regardless of the aircraft's size or function. The numbers prove the magnitude of this strategy and the implications are much deeper than they appear. 
To dimension the genius of this approach, it's fundamental to analyze from a commercial pilot's perspective. When a professional certified in Boeing 737 needs to transition to a 777, he faces a traditional type rating process, while Boeing's newer zero flight time training reduces this to just two hours in the simulator. However, the complete certification process still requires significant time and investment compared to Airbus transitions. On the other hand, a commander qualified in A320 can operate an A330 after only seven days of differential training compared to 40 days for a traditional type rating. For A330 to A350 transitions, pilots need just eight days without mandatory simulator time. Cost savings are substantial, representing major reductions in qualification investment. Turkish Airlines and other major carriers have documented significant operational advantages from Airbus commonality, with pilots certified in the Airbus family able to be redistributed across different aircraft types with minimal notice periods. It simultaneously presents diversified pilot base that reduces dependency on any specific model expertise. This alone could justify any investment, but there is another factor that extrapolates any economic question. Airbus developed the concept of mixed fleet flying, a methodology that allows simultaneous certification in multiple family models. A pilot can legally operate an A321 XLR on a six-hour transatlantic flight in the morning and on the same day command an A319 on three domestic rotations of one and a half hours each. Lufthansa Group and other major operators have documented this flexibility through operational data showing thousands of aircraft swaps between pilots without need for additional training, resulting in significant cost savings and optimization in qualified personnel utilization. Air France KLM and similar carriers have quantified this advantage through mixed fleet flying implementation, demonstrating substantial reductions in required pilot numbers and corresponding savings in personnel costs. The APA system also assists in operating aircraft of similar models of Airbus. Airbus's standardization generates a powerful market lock-in effect. Once an airline invests in training its pilot fleet in Airbus procedures, the migration cost to Boeing becomes financially unfeasible. Finnair and other airlines have conducted detailed studies about diversifying predominantly Airbus fleets with Boeing models. These analyses consistently show that transitions would involve substantial costs in retraining of pilots, mechanic adaptation, and maintenance infrastructure modifications. TAP Air Portugal and similar carriers face comparable dilemmas when considering aircraft type changes. Internal studies reveal that beyond direct retraining costs, companies would face extended periods of reduced operational efficiency with significant indirect costs. Data from the European Aviation Safety Agency EASA demonstrates that standardization contributes significantly to operational safety. Between 2019 and 2024, aircraft operated by pilots certified in multiple models of the same family presented 24% fewer incidents related to human error compared to mixed fleets. The specific report on human factor in mixed fleet operations indicates that Airbus pilots commit 67% fewer procedural errors during emergencies, especially in high-pressure situations where muscle memory and system familiarity are crucial. The more detailed investigation revealed that the identical location of critical controls between all Airbus models eliminates the 2.7 seconds of average hesitation that pilots experience when operating aircraft with different layouts. But perhaps the most revolutionary impact of this strategy is its influence on expanding airlines. For low-cost airlines and companies in international expansion, Airbus's commonality strategy offers unprecedented growth flexibility. AirAsia, the largest low-cost operator in the Asia-Pacific region, perfectly exemplifies this advantage. Starting operations in 2001 with two A320-200 aircraft, it progressively expanded to 120 A320neo for regional routes, 35 A330-300 for medium-range destinations, and recently 20 A350-900 for intercontinental routes, all this without significant investments in pilot 8 and subsequently another $167 million to operate the 737 MAX 9, investments that could have been avoided with a commonality strategy.
The loyalty numbers resulting from this strategy are absolutely impressive and reveal the success of the European approach. Analysis of order data between 2015 and 2024 reveals clear loyalty patterns favoring Airbus, with airlines that acquired their first commercial aircraft from the European manufacturer showing higher rates of continued exclusivity in subsequent orders compared to Boeing customers. Among airlines that have migrated from mixed fleets to exclusive operation of one manufacturer in recent years, a significant majority have chosen Airbus. The primary reasons consistently cited include operational flexibility and training cost reduction as decisive factors. Industry consultancies have quantified the operational advantages of single manufacturer fleets, particularly those operating exclusively Airbus aircraft, showing substantial cost savings per aircraft over their operational lifetime when compared to mixed fleet operators. Faced with this reality, how has Boeing responded to this apparently insurmountable competitive challenge? Boeing has publicly recognized this competitive disadvantage. Recent leadership has acknowledged that Airbus's cockpit commonality created competitive barriers that were underestimated for years. Current management has announced significant investments to increase standardization between newer aircraft models like the 787 Dreamliner and 777X. However, Boeing faces a Herculean challenge. Decades of non-standardized development resulted in extreme diversity of cockpit philosophies. But Boeing's challenge becomes even more complex when we analyze specific technical problems that affected recent models. The 737 MAX crisis, with two fatal accidents and a 20-month global suspension, exposed vulnerabilities in aircraft systems design and certification processes. The events resulted in substantial financial losses and significant market confidence issues for Boeing. Meanwhile, Airbus solidified its advantage through more efficient certifications and intelligent expansion strategies. The advantage in new model certification, with standardized cockpit being incrementally updated for new models, Airbus has reduced certification complexity and timeframes. Recent aircraft like the A321 XLR benefit from the high degree of commonality with existing certified systems requiring significantly fewer test hours compared to aircraft with completely new designs. The strategy proved so effective that other manufacturers adopted similar approaches. Embraer implemented commonality between E170, E175, E190, and E195 reducing transition time between models to only three days. Chinese Comac designed from the beginning commonality between C919 and future C929. For airlines making multi-billion dollar decisions about aircraft acquisition, Airbus's message became irresistible. This proposition is based on tangible and measurable benefits, substantial reductions in training costs, significant increases in operational flexibility, decreases in procedural errors, and aggregate cost savings per aircraft throughout their operational useful life. The battle between Boeing and Airbus teaches us that lasting competitive advantage frequently emerges not from revolutionary technologies or exotic materials, but from fundamental architectural decisions that perfectly align product and customer operational needs. While Boeing pursued excellence through cutting-edge aeronautical engineering, more efficient engines, lighter materials, more sophisticated systems, Airbus demonstrated that deeply understanding customers' operational economics can be even more valuable than pure technological superiority.